their rookies and understanding that they've had to do more lately because of the injuries on the team. But has their learning curve surprised you? Have they been able to do more than you thought at this point in the season than maybe you would have projected at the start of the season? Uh, I think you, you never really know what to expect with rookies. Um, I think both Moses and, and JK have done a great job. Um, obviously, we've given them uh, a lot more responsibility lately. Um, some of it uh, be, because of injury, some of it because they've earned uh, more minutes. And um, so they're both doing a great job and um, really excited about uh, what they've done this year and what they're capable of doing in the future. Do you have uh, any updates kind of on on some, you know, Gary, uh, Andre, and Otto? I know they're all out, just maybe their statuses. Otto just scrimmaged downstairs. He's feeling a lot better. He had a, a pretty rough go for a few days. Uh, just, um, you know, seasonal illness. Um, but he's doing better, and um, I expect him to play on Monday. Gary did not scrimmage. Um, I have not talked with Andre, so I'm not sure where where things are with him right now. Do you have, I mean, I know you, there's nothing structurally wrong with Gary. Is he getting better? Is he nearing court action potentially? Uh, just day to day. So we're, we're waiting until uh, he, everything clears up before he starts scrimmaging again. And then he'll need some court time before he's ready to play. Will you, will you come uh, tomorrow and, and catch James playing here? Oh, yeah. Of yeah, yeah, that'll I'll, be. I'll be here. Won't yeah. that be a fun atmosphere for yeah, him? I'm excited for him. I was so happy. Uh, to see him the other night, I watched uh, the tape and he just looked happy, looked, looked like he was excited and moving well. And it's been a long 11 months for him. So thrilled for James that he's back out on the floor. He deserves it. To follow up on that, I'm just going to see what you thought about James's first game back. And if there was any kind of part of his game that you were looking to, to see how he would perform. Um, mainly just looking at him physically. Um, you know, I thought he... He, he moved really well. You know, he got up and down the floor. He had some scores in transition. Um, he looked comfortable. He didn't look like he had anything uh, hampering him. And that was the main point with that first game was to just get his legs underneath him. And now it's just a matter of getting more reps, which you'll get uh, tomorrow. And uh, we'll be able to, you know, watch some tape with him and, and continue to work with him. Obviously, you were busy, but did you get to talk to him about how he played at all? Not yet. I haven't seen him yet. We had the day off yesterday. Coach Pop uh, gets to the number one spot and wins in the NBA, and I believe it's 199 players, and it's hard to find a team within the NBA that doesn't have some sort of connection. A aside from the wins, what stands out about what he's been able to do over his tenure? I think just the number of lives he's impacted from um, players – uh, coaches, uh, training staff, front office people, um, everyone who has interacted with Pop um, has uh, uh, just a, an incredible um, viewpoint of, a, of an extraordinary man and, and uh, someone who um, exemplifies leadership. And um, he leads from such a um, compassionate, uh, competitive way um, he, he's all about the relationships with the people around him, all about the work, but you know, the, the collaboration that goes into it. And you feel that, um, when you're playing for him, you still feel it, you know, 20 years later, you, it, it stays with you because that's how, how special being a part of his program was and continues to be. In the NBA, there's so much talent. It's hard to cover everything at times defensively against this Bucks team, what are you willing either to give up or not give up? So, like, what's the one thing you're, you're telling the guys, like, hey, the Bucks may do this, but make sure they don't do this? It all starts with transition. You know, if you let them beat you over the top or if you let Giannis go coast to coast and dunk the ball, um, then you're in big trouble. So it has to start with transition. We've got to be smart with our uh, decision-making offensively. Um, the other night in Denver, we did a great job taking care of the ball, but we took a lot of bad shots. And, um, you know, some of those shots led to, to fast break opportunities. And so we've got to be not only smart with the ball, but with our decision making, um, our decisions, when to crash the offensive board, when to get back. We've got to recognize floor balance. 
all of that stuff. And um, if we can get back and get them into, into the half court more often than not, um, then uh, then that's our best chance to to win the game. Steve, I know you can't do much about how a player shoots his free throws. Obviously, Andrew's free throws are way off uh, and getting worse. Uh, what can you do? What have you said? What can he do? And at some point, do you have to think about not, you know, having him at a crunch time if he's going to shoot at, at, at this percentage? Uh, I have talked to him. I think uh, the most important thing um, that uh, that I shared with him is that this happens to everybody. You know, it, it, it um, okay, maybe not Steph, but it happens to just about everybody else. And um, happened to me, you know, during my career. I was a good foul shooter, and there were times where, you know, it just – got into my head and I shied away from, um, you know, get, going to the foul line at key spots. And I'm not afraid to admit it. It's this, this game can mess with you. And uh, the most important thing that, um, that he can do is to attack and be aggressive. And I think you, you have to confront this stuff head on. And, and um, the best example is right down the hall, you know, Giannis last year in the playoffs was going through all those struggles and, um, he just continued to attack and go to the line. And he eventually, I think in that final game, he made like 16 out of 19, whatever it was. Um, but you have to, the only way to, to, uh, to get past it is to be more aggressive rather than cautious. You know, as soon as you get cautious and you're avoiding the free throw, now, now your whole game is affected. So uh, th those are the, those are the thoughts that I have for anybody who's struggling um, from the foul line. And the good thing with Wiggs is, um, you know, he's he's a guy who likes to attack the rim and get downhill. And and so we just have to encourage him to do what comes naturally anyway. Was it recently? I mean, last few days you had this conversation with him? Yeah, in the last week. In the last week. So um, he knows. I mean, it's just, you know, everything that these guys go through is is uh, is public. And that's what makes it difficult. Um you know, he's a really conscientious guy. He cares about his teammates and, and his team, and he wants so badly to do well. And I think he's, um, you know, he's just trying too hard right now. Steve, the um, there are a number of teams that are dealing with uh, some guys coming back. You mentioned some of your guys that will be back around the league. But what kind of a trick is that at this point of the year to try to get your team going the way you want to with new components going into it, new pieces that you're trying to integrate? And what kind of an emphasis do you put on all that at this juncture of the season? A freaking bad. Yeah, it's tricky. Um, and every team's got its own uh, unique challenges based on personnel. But, um, mm -hmm. um, you guys mute, please, on uh, Zoom. For his emails. Mm-hmm. You. Hey, uh, there we go. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. So for us, you know, the challenges are, you know, we've got, uh, we're playing a couple of rookies. We're playing some young guys. We've got, uh, Draymond coming back Monday. We've got James, you know, returning soon. A lot of, uh, you know, a lot of balls in the air and, uh, to juggle. So we've got to figure out, uh, quickly what combinations make sense. Um, I think what is becoming apparent to me this year is that uh, we could have a different starting lineup from game to game in the playoffs, from series to series. You know, it's um, this is not the Warriors from five years ago where you knew exactly what uh, what was coming. Um, we've got a lot of really good pieces, um, but we have some uh, some new ones. We have some unproven ones. We have. Uh, um, you know, we have to be able to uh, adjust quickly on the fly if things aren't going well, um, because we're not a we're not a, a, a veteran team in terms of having a set you know eight nine eight nine man rotation. Steve, you've had Steph for most of his career now. I'm wondering um, what have you what changes have you seen, whether it's physical, mental, uh, just in his game? What have you seen over the, the eight years you've been with him? Well, um, that's a broad question. There's a lot, a lot there. Um, I think when I got here, um, aggressive, shall we say, and, um, there was in recognizing the importance of, uh, getting off the ball and, um, 
engaging our our big guys, um, you know, Bogues, Draymond, uh, who were such good passers and and really, um, you know, sort of becoming more of an on and off ball threat. It balanced our team out, and it also put the ball in the hands of some guys who are really well suited to uh, to make decisions and control a game. Guys like Andre and, and Draymond. So that was the, the the real challenge the first year, and uh, since then it's just been a, a steady uh, maturity and growth. He's just gotten better and better. His work ethic has become more and more refined. He's gotten. Um, better off the floor in the weight room and the training room, just his diligence and preparing his and maintaining his body this year. I think he's been more of a point guard than ever before because of the absences. Uh, he's um, his assist to turnover ratio is really good. Um, I think he's had to tone his own game back a little bit, especially the last month or so. Um, so he's, he's really adapted uh, to whatever challenges he has faced each year.